Welcome back to the Rope Access channel. My name is Alex and in this video I will show you how to lower a casualty or lower a load using a two rope system. Let's get into it. I have rigged up my descender and my backup device. The casualty is already hanging over the edge a little bit and I'm ready to lower him. First couple of things is very important when I rig this up and I want to lower the casualty, I have to pretend like this guy is my anchor point. So the rope that would normally go towards the knot on top of us when we're descending is actually pointing to the knot attached to the casualty. We can see that because, well, I hope you can see it on the camera. There's the little loop of the knot is here that's pointing down straight. And this is the rope that should be going up. More on that in a bit. Backup wise, same thing. The arrow is pointing down instead of up because it's pointing towards the knot. And the knot is normally up there, but right now it's at the casualty. When I'm using the Petzl ASAP upside down, I need to make an extra redirect carabiner at the top so that the rope when I'm lowering rolls down through the device smoothly. If I would not do that, and I'm gonna give him some slack, which I would not do if this was a live person, but this is a dummy and everything, the whole room, everything is clear. If I would lower him, the way the rope runs through the ASAP, there's so much friction here, actually it will wear out really fast. And it might, this is my take on it, but not Petzl's of, at least that I know, is it might even interfere with the working of the device. So what Petzl states is if you use it upside down, you need a redirect carabiner at the top and then the rope slides through smoothly. Cool. I've done my rope management. It's coiled here, it's coiled there. I know it will come up freely. There's nothing sticking out over there which can catch it. So we get to the actual lowering part. Now back to the descender, to the Petzl ID and this very spur device. The rig and the ID have the same requirements when using in a lowering situation. If I'm using it upside down, I need to make some redirect so that the rope runs over the rounded edge and creates some extra friction. It's the same as with the regular rescue. We also need to create an extra friction point. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I clip a carabiner around the spine. And now the rope runs over the rounded edge and gives me some extra friction. I'm ready to lower the casualty. I test that the ASAP runs free. It does. I hold the rope open the handle and from here I just push it away and I'm gonna turn the casualty a little bit with my foot so that he goes through the hole straight. I don't wanna ram his neck on it. And again, a life load you would never do alone. You would have a team. But now I'll step over and just push the rope away a little bit. That's it. And now he's underneath. He's swinging in the open space, so I can focus on the descent again. I look at my casualty, push up, let the rope slide through my hand. Watch the ropes that they don't snag on anything. Slow and controlled, no biggie. If I want to stop, I just have to lock the descender. The same as with working, lock the descender. If you like this video, Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment on what you think of this technique. This video is sponsored by Industrial Klimme, a beautiful training center in the north of the Netherlands, right above Amsterdam. Industrial Klimme provides all kinds of safe working at high training. You can come here for your IRATA training, your GWO training, your basic safe working at high training, fire awareness, first aid, all the good stuff. If you need any climbing equipment, you can visit the store next door, or if you're not able to make it in person, you can visit the web store. The link will be down in the description. I will see you guys in the next video.